my guests are two uh, folks, uh, wonderful people who have been with me before. They are uh, Keston Namco. He is the director of the Employers Consultative Association, and Ms. Jocelyn Francois, who is the CEO of said organization. Uh, lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasure to see you, sir. It All is right. a pleasure to be here. It is good to have yes, you both here. Um, I ask you here this morning because of something you were doing that is... Um, to serenade or rather to encourage, further encourage employers in their commitment, one, to surprisingly workers' rights. And I say that because the ECA is a champion employer. You have been championing uh, employers to do one thing, which is to understand the needs of employees in order for them to have a better working environment. I am going to ask uh, Joyce Lynn if you would lay the groundwork as the purpose of the Employers Consultative Association for the Uninitiated. What is the Employers Consultative Association? Association. Okay, thank you, Renny. The Employers Consultative Association, first of all, celebrated 57 years this year in existence. Mm -hmm. the, the organization was formed in 1960, um, and it really is, I would call it, like the union of employers. Mm. During that time, of course, it was a very turbulent time um, in our mm. industrial relations climate and mm -hmm. line, landscape and employers i think at that time it was about 21 employers came together to say listen we have to have a voice we we need to be heard we need to um let our views be uh, taken into account etc and so the employers consultative association was formed basically our mandate is to represent our members in terms of anything relating to industrial relations mm -hmm. um helping them mm -hmm. to understand and uh well well let me put into context as well the employers consultative association by virtue of the large membership that we now have which is close to 800 mm -hmm. we uh, ha have been recognized by the international labor organization as the most representative um, employer body in trinidad and tobago mm -hmm. and therefore mm -hmm. part of our mandate of course mm -hmm. is not is to advise employers but from the context of one that international best practice also, uh, you would know that Trinidad and Tobago is a signatory to the ILO conventions. I believe as at this time we would have signed about uh, 21 um, conventions, international conventions mm -hmm. on different aspects of work. Um, you know, in the country, etc. And therefore, we take our whole responsibility to our employers very seriously because, you know, from a national, in a national context. We're talking our commitment to international labor standards, mm. etc. And therefore, our role really is to engage and to interact with the members, employers in Trinidad and Tobago, and basically um, advise them on that uh, relations with their employees. It is one of the reasons I'm gra I gravitated to your organization in the first place, because when you speak of the ILO, that is usually to the chagrin of many employers. So when the when the ILO and and, and, and an employers association mention in the same breath, it, 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 it does take my attention. Yes. Yes, but, um, you know, really, as you know, in the landscape, one of the, the signatory, one of the conventions that we have signed on to is that tripartite. This mm -hmm. is Trinidad and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and therefore, for us, very important is, is um, you know, that relationship mm -hmm. with government and labor. And it's not that we want employers to just go out there and do whatever they want to do and we condone it. It really is getting our employers uh, educated on some of the principles, etc., mm -hmm. so that when we engage with government and labor, we are able to come to some consensus and we are able to come to a more harmonious type of relationship and you know ongoing I mean we will never have that hundred percent harmony you know but definitely um, that whole social dialogue that comes with that tripartite mechanism is critical to solving a lot of the issues and a lot of the problems um, that is you know um, uh, confronting us seeing right, right now, now in, in abundance in our country that is the voice of Jocelyn Frostworth she's the CEO of the Employers Consultative Association indeed a tripartite um, uh, approach is only workable if you have an organization that represents a ground swell of employers 800 uh, members is something that is indeed very good the climate right now is a very difficult one Keston Namco director to let me call you inside of here. These are very, very, very difficult times because um, as we discussed on one of your earlier visits, the first thing to do is to 
trouble in paradise, cut employees, do this, close down, do this, do that, cut, but, but, but maintain expectation of profit. How are you dealing with your members' um, first um, obligation, which is to make profit, and the reality that the climate has changed? Well, you know, Rennie, this is a very important dynamic. And as Jocelyn was just, has just articulated, um, this whole tripartite and social dialogue process, this has been going on for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And efforts have been made to really get parties together but it continues to, to, to slip away from the parties when they come to the table. And I think a lot of that has to do with the parties to the tripartite uh, organization really do not have, have not been able to demonstrate that will and commitment to transcend personal and private agendas mm -hmm. and focus on what is in the national interest. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lip service that, that, that is being paid to that. Okay, let's come together. You know, uh, we can only succeed if we focus on what is in the national interest. But when you get down to the fundamentals that will drive that, for example, what are, you know, can we agree on a common shared understanding as to how we should go forward? And as you have said, that we spoke about, I've made reference on many occasions to the burning platform. The platform continues to burn. Mm. And we are just, I would have to say at this point, conclude that we are just sitting by and nothing concrete, you know, nothing compelling is, is, is really coming from the parties, which is where do we go from here? Mm. How can we come together are we prepared to give up some thing in order for us to achieve what, as we describe, is in the, the national interest? You know, and until we can get to that place, we're going to be talking about this over and over. Mm, mm. I was hoping that um, at this point in time where, I mean, the reality has struck. There's no money. And as you quite rightly said, employers continue to talk about the reason there is on death for being in business is to make profits. But then I've lived long enough to understand that companies don't make profits. People do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where some balance got to take place. And there seemed to be there, there seem to be a misunderstanding because you you attack the, the 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 profit aspect of it. Business is to make profit, but you know, my point was the expectation of profit. If you're doing 500% and and things have changed and you still think you should make 500%, there is a disconnect. But I don't think Renny, that um employers in the face of because there's a lot of information, there's a, a lot of education about the economics. So we're not, you know, fabricating what's happening in the economy. So, and I don't think, based on our interaction with employers, I don't think they expect the same levels of profit. Mm. I think employers have come to the point where um, even if they, they're looking at other, me, they're looking at the productivity issue as a, mat as a matter of fact. They're looking at how can we, so, so yes, we may not uh, earn the same levels as we enjoyed before. Mm -hmm. But can we get the um, employees to be more uh, productive? How can we? And I, I think a lot of the questions that we get coming to us is um, as, a, as the EC is, how can you help us to make our systems more productive? Well, I know part of the tripartite discussion is with the government but you also have yourself, I would assume uh, either you or Kesson can answer this, as a buffer between the employers and the unions. Sure, and it's really... It's how really, well is that working? It's really about how do you uh, influence the kind and quality of behavioral changes that are necessary. So you speak to the union about, you know, let's talk about, these are the facts. This is the balance sheet, okay? We can't run away from this. Mm -hmm. How can we work together to keep this enterprise going so that both parties can continue to exist. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you finding um, <clears throat> accommodating ears? Well, well, in some instances. Well, in some yes. instances. Yeah. And, and it really has to do, so on one hand you have, I'm here to make profits. The other hand is saying, you know, what about the enabling environment that is required? You know, 
you're cutting here, cutting there, you know, and what is being cut quite naturally would be headcount, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. investment and training and development and those kind of critical things that one would expect under normal circumstances to prevail. So that the ECA has in fact been, been providing that not really a, being a referee more than how can we, what are the fundamentals of that en enabling environment? Mm. What are the factors that are going to drive and bring a balance at the end of the day so that the employee can be productive? Because we are not for one moment encouraging uh, employees to not to be diligent and recognize that they have a responsibility. They do have a responsibility. At the end of the day, when you hear employees are not performing and so on. That's because the management is not insisting on the expectations and performance standards that would have been. Mm -hmm. You know, I guarantee you that there are not many people in leadership roles who feel comfortable enough to sit down and have those very well, I wouldn't say difficult conversations, but the kind of conversations that are required, you look at an employee in the eye and say, you are not performing. Mm -hmm. How can we improve on this? And those conversations, generally, people in leadership roles, they run away from it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just to support what Kesson is saying, at the national level, we're seeing a situation, and I know the labor body is going to you know, be upset with me, but you cannot, because things are not going your way, you cannot pick up your marbles and run away. You know, how you have to stay the course. Difficult times, challenging times. We have to sit at the table Good and we have to go through the issues and we have to bring it to the fore. We can't pick up our marbles and run. And, and right now, the NTAC, National Tripartite Advisory Council, um, you know, the meetings and so have been suspended because, you know, the labor faction, you know, because they're unhappy with, you know, the issues they have pulled out. They have refused to come to the table. So Mr. Nanku is talking yeah, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nanku is talking about at the firm level where you know we, we we're saying, okay, talking with the employees, how can we get you and you know let's let's engage. You know, engagement is one of the critical things that we're talking about now. But we have to engage at the national level, we have to engage at the firm level. Um if we are to get the best out of um I had our, Mr. Roger uh, on with me two weeks ago and that whole question of suspending participation in the tripartite um, grouping was discussed and uh, he said it was a temporary thing. We well, temporary. Uh, the temporary. longer we take to come the problem bring is the, the issues, problem goes yeah, the line. We, it, it is going to just keep us back. We can't afford that. Not right. in you know, this uh, current climate. Yes, what yes, else, you know, why did it happen in the first place? If I am to influence change, I can't do that from the outside. I, I got to do it from the inside. Mm -hmm. So I would find myself around that tripartite table, intact, saying, guys, what you did is wrong. You know, how can we move beyond this? I guess what the union is saying, Mr. Roger is probably saying, listen, this is not the first time. It's not the second time. It's not the third time. Why is it we continue to make these fundamental errors which strike at the heart of, of disrespect, as the union mm -hmm. would say? Mm -hmm. You know, you, once you have a bargaining unit, for God's sake, be prepared to sit down and have a conversation. At the end of the day, in most instances, once it can be supported by fact and so on, the employer will be able to do what he or she can reasonably be expected to do. And there will be adversarial positions. Yeah. I mean, that is the very basis of, of this own. being set up. Yes, so you, you you sit there and you and, and you keep hammering through yes, on it. I'm to. I'm not going to go on the on on, 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 on <laughs> either side, one or the other, because usually yes. there is a lot to go around, and, and and everybody's got their view. You were celebrating uh, the as the uh, representative of 800 um, em employers uh, businesses. Um, you are celebrating uh, what is it? Your seventh anniversary? Is it your seventh? The the 
yes, the recognition, uh, the awards that we have. This is the seventh year that we're having it. Seventh year. Explain yes. to us what this is about because this, I feel, you know, at, at times you can just go to these tripartite meetings, you can just hit people over the head, but after a while you have to take a pause and show people appreciation for what they have tried to do. That is part of even what you do in businesses when you say <laughs> yes. at the end of the year, guys, sit down and let's all yes. have a little have drink, a drink or something, or something. right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so tell us about this. This is an opportunity for employers to come together and be recognized. Tell well, me about if, that. If I, let me just jump in here before uh, Jocelyn gives the, provides the details and mm -hmm. so on. This we see it as an important barometer by which employers are able to measure and mm. get feedback in terms of how they're doing along critical management practices. Mm. Okay? Mm. For example, engagement, corporate social responsibility, industrial relations Gosh. practices, you know, how are you adhering to that? You know, what kind of, how many matters you have that go before the court? You know, that kind of thing. So this is a very important, mm. and I, I, you know, the ECA should, um, employers should see this as a tremendous opportunity, whether it's once in, in two years, one in three years, get feedback. Because at the end of the day, what this leads to is you, notwithstanding what industry you may be in, you are competing for talent. Yes. And as an employer, you want to secure the best talent. And if you want to secure the best talent, then you can only do that by getting uh, feedback from your, your people mm -hmm. as to mm -hmm. how are we doing? You know, we talk about sometimes being an employee of choice. Are we doing the things that really support that, you know, that position? You know, so it is very important. This yes. is a very important barometer. This is why the EC takes a lot of pride in terms of putting this activity on because it is critical. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Jason. And what I would say is um, I, I, I'm very pleased that despite, um, an, this is the first year that we've gotten a number, the, we have gotten the largest number of applications this mm. year, which is a mm. good sign. However, during the, the period of promoting it, and so I was a little um, this not so happy by um, a lot of companies admitting and sort of saying to me, you know, well, maybe not this year. We don't have this in place. We don't have that in mm. place, which means, which means it's a good thing. Um, on the other hand, because it means that we have a lot of work to do yes. in terms of helping yes. them to get to those levels. So we have gotten a number of applications. So we're very happy about that. Mm. We will be, Mr. Nanku talked about the areas that we're looking at. One of the areas I think is critical to highlight, especially in light of this week being um, National Safety, uh, Safety Week, is the Osh, how Osh compliant you are in mm. your organization. Uh, um, Osh, just for I'm sorry, occupational, occupational <laughs> safety and health. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you know that is a that is very important. It's on the forefront right now. Um, the Osh authority is you know making a lot, um, actually going out there and doing a lot of visits. And employers are getting a little scared, you know. Um, but the you know we know the importance of Osh because we're talking about lives. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, you know, ensuring mm -hmm, that we mm -hmm. keep our employees um, and that sort of thing. So basically, the 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 competition is off um the it's being evaluated right now on the 12th of may which mm -hmm. is next week not this week next week friday um the winners will be you know celebrated at the uh, awards function which is taking place at the hyatt regency mm -hmm. um and you know there are different categories large large medium and um this year large medium and small and this year we introduce a micro category so we are not leaving anyone out you know um very important as well, and I think it, it's linked to some of what we've been talking about. We have introduced a, another competition inside of there, and that competition is where we are asking employers to tell us, we, we call it a call for solutions. Mm. We're asking you to tell us what are your um, solutions to some of the issues that are being faced. And the winner of that competition, uh, we get a chance to win a free vacation in the lovely Spice Island of Grenada mm. okay. at staying for three nights at Grenada's best resort, which is the Spice Island Beach Resort, an all-inclusive luxury beach um, hotel. And it's located on the Granans um, Beach. And we know about Granans. Mm -hmm. 
um, so if you are the winner of the competition, this competition where you submit your entries in terms of what are your solutions to some of the issues and the problems that are being faced in our country right now, you get two airline tickets to Grenada, three nights stay at the hotel in a pool suite, mm -mm. breakfast, lunch, dinner, and drinks. Mm -mm. And the prize is actually valued at 40,000 TT Mr. Nanku, can I take part in this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and and, and grand, um, Spice Island is a triple A five mm. diamond mm. award winner. So it's really a premium prize that we have been able to secure. And we're asking, of course, employers submit your entry. You have until the 5th of May, which is this Friday, um, for a chance to win. And I where mean, they submit this to? To the ECA, the, the Employers ECA. Consultative mm -hmm. Association, the telephone mm -hmm. number 675-9388 or 759-2148 or 2149. Or you can visit our our website at ecatt.org. So okay. we're talking about a stressful period in our country's existence, but here's ECA giving some employer, lucky employer, an opportunity to relax and enjoy and kick off the stress. Well, that's one good thing, but I, I also take this because I was listening to when, uh, and thanks for being gentle on me um, having uh, the name, <laughs> Keston, Keston was saying earlier that while he was talking about what it's about, or both of you speaking about what it is, it sounds to me like a gentle way of chastising you. You didn't win the award. Work harder next time. Yes. Um, no, but remember I but said... But you need that, you need yes, that feel of yeah, time. Yeah, yes, but yeah. I remember I said, one of the things we say, we say with the competition, it gives you a chance for an audit, a free audit and for your audit, company. That's right. Where are the that's areas, right. you know, that you need to work on and we can help you work on those areas. Well, I think it's very important. The country would agree. Everyone, I'm sure, would agree that we have to get this tripartite uh, initiative working because only through dialogue. Uh, I always say conf conversation and not confrontation. Yes. Uh, because it's the only way we get anything sure. done. Sure. All right. Uh, I, thanks, both of you, for being yes. here as always. Great.